going on, everybody? James World of Floaters here. Wait, what was that? Did somebody say VDM Project? I believe they did. About 20 of you in my comment section. So what I wanted to do was provide a full-on VDM Project review. Now, I just got done watching a one hour and 45 minute webinar on the VDMproject.org page. And I gotta say, I was blown away and very impressed. So what I wanted to do was provide a full-on review. So go ahead and stay tuned. We'll get into it right after this. Also, if you wanna know more about iFloaters, research and news, make sure you press the like and subscribe button as well as hit the bell icon so that you're notified every time I drop a new video. Let's get started. Okay, so first of all, what I wanna do is tell you all my initial thoughts going into the VDN project. Before I did any research at all, let me just tell you, I was getting a lot of comments. So at first I thought it was nothing more than spam. Boy, was I wrong. Let me tell you, this organization they're very professional and they're doing everything the right way. So when I watched the hour and 45 minute long webinar, I was blown away by all the information that Dr. Sabag was giving everybody. And for that fact alone, Dr. Sabag giving everybody all this very useful information, if you are somebody who has eye floaters, there's the anatomy of the eye you need to learn about because it'll help you understand more of what's going on in your eye and it won't bother you as much the more that you know. And that's just facts. So I gotta say, now that I've actually looked into the VDM project, I'm glad I did. And I gotta tip my hat off to Fabio, invisible hat. But those are my first thoughts and now I'm very glad that I looked into it. So let's move on with the review. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello, Fabio, and uh, hello to everyone on the World Wide Web. We're very pleased that you joined us for this webinar. My role in this uh, webinar and in the VDM project in general is to provide the scientific basis for our understanding of vitreous and the origin of vitreous floaters. We realize that the majority of our audience is sufferers, people who have I floaters, uh, but I will nonetheless present the scientific perspectives because I think it's important for everybody to appreciate that there are sound scientific underpinnings to our ways of thinking and managing uh, I floaters. Uh, I won't dumb it down, but I'll try to make it understandable for everyone in this heterogeneous audience. So thank you, Fabio, for organizing this very nice webinar. Thank you, doctor, for being with us uh, tonight. So I'm going to share uh, the slides for the presentation. Um, can you please confirm me, doctor, that you see the slides right now? Yeah. So one thing I really like about this project is that they put in such a great effort to create the website, to get the right people in place, get Dr. Sabag, somebody who knows a great deal of vitreous and eyeball related stuff. And also they took the time to put together the right tools to make sure Google would sponsor them. Yes, that's right. Google sponsors the VDM project and they promote them on Google whenever you type in iFloaters for free, basically. That's how legit the VDM project is. And the effort that they're putting in, the foot that they're putting forward to help us all, you can't help but to say, Fabio, Dr. Sabag, you're doing your thing. And the iFloater community really appreciates it. Our topic you. today is floaters. And I think it's important for you to realize that floaters are not structures inside the eye. Rather, they are a visual phenomenon, basically shadows that are created by opacities within the vitreous body. And that's an important distinction. Here you can see a scanning laser ophthalmoscope image of a doctor who had come to me complaining of floaters in his vision that interfered with his work. And this image shows the shadows that are cast upon the inside of the back of the eye, particularly 
in the central portion of the retina, which is called the macula. And you can see these dark areas represent the shadows that interfered with this doctor's vision and many other patients as well. So how does this form? What happens inside the vitreous to result in the opacities that create shadows that disturb vision and make life miserable for many people? Well, this image that was uh, taken by me when I was at Harvard uh, represents the appearance of the vitreous body in a nine-month-old child. And what I've done here is I've peeled off the outer layers, the sclera, the choroid, and the retina, but left the vitreous body attached to the structures in the front of the eye. This particular specimen is situated on a surgical towel and exposed to room air. And it's rather remarkable that the vitreous body maintains this gel state. But the other thing that I want you to appreciate is the exquisite transparency of vitreous. It's one of the most important functions of vitreous, and that is the maintenance of clear media in the center of the eye so that light can travel into the eye and all the way to the retina where it results in the process of vision that ultimately ends up in the brain. It's also of interest to uh, explore what could the possible causes of the opacities be that create floaters later in life. And there are several hypotheses because basically I think there are several different causes. They're not the same in every individual. And in recent years, I've become very interested in the concept that the origin of vitreous opacities could relate to an anomaly of embryogenesis. When you're in the embryo state, during the first three months of embryogenesis, the vitreous body is filled with blood vessels, such as those okay, that you see so at the top. Okay, so one of the questions that I was really glad they brought up is, why are young people getting eye floaters so young? The doctor said the politically correct thing that there's still a lot of research that needs to be done. They have ideas and theories, but they can't exactly say what is causing young people to get eye floaters so young. I know myself, I really want to know this answer as well, because there's so many young people out there getting eye floaters. Um, if you all have been watching me, I'm somebody who really believes that the technology we use these days and blue light is the reason why. Our eyes are uh, degenerating at a faster rate and causing eye floaters, um, but that's just me personally. However, I'm very glad that they brought this question up because, you know, it's 2020 and who knows how many people are going to have eye floaters by 2030. So very glad they're asking that question and looking into it. The intentions are good. They're doing everything by the books. There's really nothing bad you could say about the VDM project. However... I do have a few questions that were not answered in the webinar. One of those questions being, where is my donation going? Now, I know it's not going into the pockets of nobody. Everything is all well and fine. I know that it's a nonprofit organization. However, I want to know if I'm spending $50, $100, $200 on a membership I do not want to just be a part of the mastermind section of the website where I could leave my, my thoughts and ideas. For me, being somebody who budgets really well and likes to put my money into well places, I want to know if I'm spending $50, $100, $200 a month because they have three options for donations um, on a monthly basis, you know, that's you know, like over a thousand dollars a year, potentially, if you do the $100 option or the $200 option. Um, and if you do the $50 option, you know, that's $600 a year. But what kind of time frame are we looking at? That's another question I want to know. And what kind of research are we doing? Are we doing research for a natural cure? Or are we doing research for a surgical cure? Because after about an hour into the webinar, Dr. Sabag started heavily talking about surgery, started talking about vitrectomy surgery and the benefits of vitrectomy surgery and all the actual factuals, percentages of how many times vitrectomies worked on certain age groups and what have you. 
a lot of people in the iFloater community, me being one of them, and me being somebody who talks to many of the iFloater community, I know that a lot of us want a natural cure. And I do understand that it does take money and it does take donations to be able to fund the research of all of these things. But I need more of a time frame because if I'm spending $600, $1,000, $2,000 a year on the VDM project, how many years am I going to be donating, you know? And I understand that it's a, a, a taxable event. If I'm making donations to this organization, it's a write-off on my taxes. I understand that. But let's be honest here. Most people in the world do not spend $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 in donations every year. The average working class man does not spend that kind of money. And for the people that can afford to spend that kind of money, they're just going ahead and getting a vitrectomy surgery. So what I want to know about the VDM project, is this an organization that is going to be going on forever? Are they going to be researching different ways to, to find a cure? And in the meantime, in between time, just telling people, just go ahead and get a vitrectomy. That was kind of one of my takeaways watching the webinar. You know, no no shade, nothing like that. I just wanted to give you my honest feedback as far as the takeaways on the webinar went. So all around, I really like how they're putting together the VDM project. They got the website down pat, really professional. They got the doctor in place, Dr. Sabag, Mr. Fabio, marketing genius, really smart guy, really like what they're doing. Um, it seems like they really need everybody's donations. So everybody check out the VDM project.org. Um, I, myself, I do co-sign this project. I want you all to go ahead and do that. One thing I will say is if you all do not want an invasive procedure, just spread the word however you can through VDM Project, by sharing my videos, The World of Floaters. However you need to get the word out there, the only way our word is going to be heard is if you spread the word. Everybody, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, share my videos, and also to help sustain my making of these videos and podcasts, be sure to go ahead and sign up for my memberships on anchor.fm. The link for that will also be in the information. Thank you all so much. I love you all. Talk to you soon.